Hey there, cats and kittens. Welcome. My name is Alonda Carter, and I am the Recovering Hunbot. I create anti-MLM, that's anti-multi-level marketing videos, and on occasion, I do dip my toes into true crime. Today, we are going to examine another one of these top Beachbody coaches who made it to the highest rank of 15 star diamond. Now to make it easy on myself, because if you have been watching my videos, then you may know I've been having some issues with one of my legs, my ankle, something's going on and it's in pain. So instead of me trying to get everything in my noggin, I'm just going to read it to you because that's easier and I'm doing what's easy for me. Got it? Okay, so the person in this video, in 2009, she founded a clothing line called Demu Label. In 2012, at the age of 25, she married into a wealthy Canadian family that had opened their first grocery store, which grew into a huge enterprise, but that first grocery store was opened in 1981. She joined Beachbody May 31st of 2013 at the age of 26, that's the same year that she created her YouTube channel. That same year, her Demu label clothing line seems to have closed shop. Back when she joined Beachbody, she says that she had maybe 100 followers or so on Instagram. But thanks to Shailene Johnson, if you don't know who Shailene is, she is one of the super trainers, but she also does like, you know, speaking at events for multi-level marketing and she creates other things that she markets towards what hmm, gee, people in multi-level marketing. Anyway, she took Shailene Johnson's Impact Academy and she says that she was then able to grow her audience tenfold. She is considered a YouTube star and blogger, and she gained popularity from her beauty routines and fashion hauls. She also became certified to teach Shailene's Pio. Pio is one of the Beachbody programs. Six months into her Beachbody business, she was making over $500 per week. That is unusual. By her one-year mark, she had started earning $1,000 per week. And a year and a half into the game, she was earning close to $2,500, that's $2,500 per week as a Beachbody coach. By her second anniversary, she was bringing in $4,000 a week as a Beachbody coach. Why? Let me ask you this. Is there anything in her background that might be a teensy-weensy bit helpful? Just wondering out loud. For one thing, I think timing was on her side because back then, you know, things were different and people who had large networks, and I think she did have a large network come on clothing line, also marrying into a wealthy family. Sounds like a really big network to me. Maybe I'm just crazy, but you know, I'm just putting the pieces together and saying, you know what, if it looks like a duck, it sounds like a duck, and it quacks like a duck, and it walks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Something else, I think having you know, done this whole clothing line thing, that probably would have taught her a thing or two about marketing, don't you think? In 2017, she was one of the top 10 coaches in Beachbody. In 2018, her father-in-law was listed as number 16 on the top 100 CEOs of Canada. That same year, she hit Success Club 10 for 59 months in a row. That's a lot. Now, I'm not going to break down all the Success Club stuff. I have done that before. If you're really curious, Google it or watch some of my other videos. But that basically, she is going to be helping at least you know, five people, six people a month. Also, this person is connected to Shailene Johnson's sister. Shailene Johnson's sister is Janelle Summers. Janelle was in Shailene's video, Turbo Kick, and she even was like, hey, here's my sister. Don't you think that might have helped Shailene's sister grow uh, an eensy, eensy bit? I mean, call me crazy. Now, as far as I know, this person is not directly in Janelle's genealogy, but you know, there's that connection because she is certified in PIO. And plus, let's face it, you know, having this vast network of people from marrying rich, I, you know, just saying, I think that would be something kind of helpful. 
She's also a member of the Millionaire Club. Being a member of the Millionaire Club does not mean that you're earning a million dollars every year, but it means that you've earned at least a million dollars. Now, the thing is, every top earner, they just work on pulling your heartstrings about how basically, you know, that whole rags to riches. But I'm not seeing it in this case, you know? I really don't see it. I mean, they all want you to think that I'm just like you. And, you know, I just worked really hard and boom, this just happened. I mean, all it takes is for you just to focus and not give up. And I'm just calling baloney sandwich on all of that because every single one of the top beach buddy coaches with 15 star diamonds, I've been covering when you start going into what their background is, they each, each one of them have a certain skill set. That skill set may differ from person to person, but it's a skill set nonetheless that helped them rise to the top. And you cannot tell me that it didn't. I mean, you know, it goes back to the duck. I hear some quacking. And the thing is where they just tell you these stories about how they were able to climb up to success. I feel like they do that because they want to be relatable. They want you to see yourself and their story so that you believe, yeah, if she did it, I can do it too. And you just, you know, it, it gets you more entrenched into the entire indoctrination and group think of everything associated with multi-level marketing, in my opinion. And the whole concept of that anyone can build this life of freedom and time freedom and everything is just roses and unicorns and pixie dust is a great big huge bucket of hooey in my opinion. The contents of this video is based on my experience, my research and my opinions. And I don't want you to send hate to anyone who's involved in multi-level marketing or involved in Beachbody or if you know who this person is, don't send them hate either. I mean, it's not the point to do any of that. It's more like to shine a light on the fact that people who do rise to the top, they are different than you than me. People who rise to the top, they are different. They do have something that they bring to the table that they just kind of hold that back. They kind of like just gloss on over that so that you 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 won't notice you know they're just kind of like oh look squirrel and you know you, if they focus you on something else then you won't put the pieces together but i'm here to put those pieces together and show you that all that glitters is not gold also be kind to each other in the comment section and be kind to me i mean really the world can just use more kindness so just you know be nice Play nice. Now, let's get to what this person has to say and what I have to say about what she's saying. What is up, you guys? All right, I'm going to bring the goods hopefully tonight. And I love that these calls are like short, sweet, to the point, giving you not only that belief and that motivation, like that anchor in your week, which I'm totally obsessed with, but hopefully tonight I can bring you a little bit of perspective on the social media side of things, which is something that I've come to love to talk about. And I kind of pulled my coaches on this. And I also just really thought back to the things that I struggled with. And I'm just going to, I'm going to bring all of the goods tonight. So <laughs> yes, you guys, the neon pink sign. So we're going through all the social media things. I'm going to take you guys through ultimately my five steps to not only be yourself on social media, to build your confidence and hopefully grow your audience and build your business. So we're going to go through the five steps and really they're stemmed from five questions that, like I said, I've asked coaches that I hear a ton that I asked myself and that I had moments of frustration with. So the first one was how to know what my brand and my audience is like, I don't know who I'm looking for, who I'm talking to. I don't know if anybody cares and I'm speaking and I feel like it's going into thin air. You know what I find really interesting is in their training, <laughs> there's never anything about like, well, now that you have a business and you don't really have your own business, but let's just roll with that anyway. There's nothing about like what you need to do to set aside money for taxes. Well, then again, most people aren't going to be making money. So I'm answering my own question. Why wouldn't they teach that? There's no reason to. You just have to, I guess, stumble along and figure it out. But they're not teaching you any concrete type 
information, you know? I mean, this whole concept of branding yourself, and trust me, I got so caught up in that. It's like, you know, that's the least of your worries, honestly, when you are just starting this thing. Because branding yourself happens over time just by you being you. But this is something I feel that it distracts people because people start looking up, what's branding? How do I brand myself? Well, I've got to use a certain font. Or I've, pictures look a certain way. I've got to do all these. i got to brand me. i got to brand myself. And still no one's paying attention to you. And they're not paying attention to you on social media because they're sick and tired of seeing any kind of multi-level marketing stuff. They're sick and tired of the beach buddy jank on social media. So that might be a reason. The only people who are like paying attention to any of that stuff are other coaches and that's it. And every now and then one of these top people, you know, they pick up someone who start, thinks that they're like, you know, actually going to be offering them something decent. They don't realize it's multi-level marketing. I mean, that happens too, allegedly, in my opinion. I want you to know that when you are posting your brand, and I know it's such a sexy word right now, right? Like we talk about presets and all the things, your brand and your target audience is all encompassed in you before Beachbody. It's you before you found the solution that has changed your life or will change your life either fitness wise or business wise. And yes, that will take time and effort to develop, but that's your brand. That's who you're speaking to. It's you. That's it. It doesn't have to be that complicated. And the sooner that I realized that it brought me not only a sense of calm, but a sense of confidence moving forward. And so it kind of allowed me and enabled me to be that much more authentically me. And yes, the weird, quirky, you know, the Disney stuff and all the things, but these are, were all things in the beginning that I not only not shared, I literally hid them. I was so embarrassed to share who I authentically was. I gained weight on my beach by journey. I went from really, really skinny and not strong at all to someone that actually needed to gain muscle, which is why I'm so dang passionate about, you know, not really following the scale. And if you need to gain weight on your journey, then that's okay. And that became something that I started speaking about and that became a part of my brand, but something that held me back tremendously. And, you know, if you're asking yourself this question of, I don't know what my brand is and I don't know who my audience is, you could be very well stuck in this comparison game or even just inspiration game where you're inspired by many people and what you're doing on your page is you are ultimately, at least this happened to me. And I want to try and help you so this doesn't happen to you. I became a watered down version of someone else. And you can't be, you know, anything on social media if you're a 2.0 version of someone else, because they're going to go find Miss 1.0 over there. So you got to find the fullest version of you to your core. And yes, that will take growth and it'll take time, but it's so worth it because it's such an easier, more authentic way to grow on social media. And that's what we're going to kind of dive into. But I want you to know that first, your brand and your audience, it's you. It's literally just you before Beachbody. And that's who you're speaking to and hopefully connecting with. And that's why when you're sharing your authentic story, there's someone out there that probably needs to hear that, that it will resonate with them because they're going through the same thing that you did. So the more that you can kind of peel back those layers and just find the pieces of you that you need to share, even if you think it's not that exciting, you got to stop comparing it to someone that you feel has a more exciting story or someone that you feel has a more exciting interest or passion, or just in your mind, has it easier in this business or easier on social media. My upline's upline is Janelle Summers. I have always respected and looked up to her. In the beginning, it was so difficult to just watch on social media and be inspired right by all these top coaches and I would just watch them and try and kind of grab a little bit from what they were doing and ultimately what I was doing was just becoming hi Janelle I was just becoming a watered down version of what they were doing instead of just trying to really zero in on the things that I nerded out about the things that made me unique my own story and me before Beachbody and you know, I think that right now you could very well have your own Janelle that yes, you love them and you're obsessed with them, but you're becoming a watered down version of that person. Be yourself. 
That's the fastest way to success on social media and in this business. And it's the most freeing feeling ever. Now I am going to agree with her is that you should be yourself if you're going to brand yourself. However, when it comes to multi-level marketing, I don't think that works for everyone, you know, this authentic self sort of a thing. I know myself, I mean, I was being me. I mean, sure, I was still kind of like figuring things out and all of that, but I wasn't, I wasn't like copying someone else. I was really digging into myself and coming up with my own content, my own thoughts, and putting it out and telling my story. And you know how much that did for me? Nothing. Now, here's the funny thing is because once I started, you know, my YouTube channel and started you know, creating anti-MLM content because I really, once I realized like what people had thought about me, I knew I had to speak out. And so I've been creating that content ever since. And I have grown from doing it. I started with r slash anti-MLM. Then I started looking into the psychological type stuff. I've done a ton of deep dives. I was doing a lot of people's stories. I started, you know, like with a podcast, with interviewing people. So I've done a whole lot of different things. But the funny thing is, is that I just grew organically. It's not the same as like when you're in MLM because you're trying to get people on your team. You're trying to attract people to you because you want them to join. You want them to buy something. But that's not what I'm doing here. I'm here to, I guess, be a light and to shine that light on the jank that happens in MLM. And now I'm going into something even darker in my Notorious series. So it's, it's very different. People have to want to be, look. they're looking for, you know, they have to want information that you are putting out. And it doesn't matter how authentic you are or not or whatever. If people aren't looking for that information, you can be as authentic as you want to be. No one will care, especially if what you have to offer is multi-level marketing, especially since more and more people are talking about how multi-level marketing isn't the best idea. Because in the end, and I've said it so many times, it all depends on endless chain recruitment. And now granted, some people will try to compare multi-level marketing to what other businesses do. And it's like, hey, it's all the same. Well, it may be similar because you're all going to be marketing, but what you have to offer is going to be different. And that's the kicker right there is when you are in a regular business, you're not trying to recruit anyone. And the only time you can actually make the real money in multi-level marketing is in recruiting. How many times have I said this? My God, I feel like a broken record. Does that make sense? Okay. Number two, this is literally probably the most common question I get, especially with social media. How do you connect, convert, and reach more people? My answer to that, and the, I had to learn this the hard way, your focus is way off. That if your number one focus, when you are coming onto social media and you are trying to grow your audience and you are trying to reach more people, if your number one focus is that you want to convert that person, you got it wrong. If your end goal is the sale, you're doing it wrong. You really are. It's exhausting. It is not a fun way to grow a business. And if you can just care first and be a kind person that is present for people, whether they equal a dollar sign or not. And that's what I've kind of become about on social media is if I can make it more about the impact and the connection with that person and not about the dollar, then I'm golden. That, and it just leads to so much more. It leads to more trust. It leads to deeper connections and conversations. Um, one of the greatest needle moving tips I can give you that I've done over the past 12 months, I've literally like 10 X the views on my stories. I had an embarrassing amount of views on my stories. I went on the top 10 trip and I start, you know, we were talking about just views and what they were getting. And I was like this little fish out of water and it was terrible what I was getting compared to them. And I just felt like such a, you know, we, we, listen, we all still have it. We all still have the insecurities and I've 10 X that in the past 12 months. And can I tell you the number one thing I did? I answer all my DMS with more than an emoji and more than three characters. So 
I always take the time to say more than just thank you. I don't, y'all, listen, I'm Canadian, I say y'all. The thumbs up, we can't. We gotta, we gotta stop the trend of the thumbs up. I can't with the thumbs up. So I don't send a heart, I don't double tap, I don't do a thumbs up. More often than not, it is three characters or more from the heart. I try and keep the conversation going every single time. But if it's a question about my shoes or my dog or whatever, where certain coaches are in the beginning of their business, and I know that I felt this way in the beginning, is well, if it's not going to lead to X, Y, and Z of me growing my business, then it, I, it's not going to be a priority in terms of answering that comment or that question. It's so, it's the opposite way of looking at it. It really is. It will bring you so much more joy and connection and community with growing your social media audience and connecting with people on a, on a deeper level. And when you think about it, just in the sense of connecting, if you want someone to feel comfortable to reach out to, to join your challenge group. And I think that we're really quick to be like, well, you know, I don't know if I want to reach out to people. It's really scary to invite. If it's scary for you to invite, how scary do you think it is for the person following you that I hate to break it to you, but they see you as an influence. Now I am going to say, I do agree with her that we should not be using the thumbs up or an emoji. We should be establishing genuine connections with people, but there's a problem with that because I feel like, this is a mixed message because one of the things that you always get in multi-level marketing and you do get this with Beachbody is there's like this, I want to say it's called fast starter type thing. And if you hit success club the first three months, then your summit ticket is paid for granted. You got to pay for airfare. You got to pay for your hotel. You got to pay for, you know, meals and all of that. But I digress. But the thing is, is that, you know, on the one hand, you're told when you come in, if you've watched my video where I broke down, um, it was one of the trainings that was done in corporate. I can't remember what the name of the video is. Hopefully I'll remember to put up the um, thumbnail like right now as I'm talking about it. But the person is talking about how you just need to help two people each and every month. Well, if you're helping these two people, that means they're getting a challenge pack and they're you know at least doing that. They may not have signed up as a coach, but you're going to prime them for that. So if it's, it's like, which is it? Should you be doing that? Or should you just forgo all of that and say, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to focus on making money. All I'm going to do is be authentic. You know, I really feel like that there's not a clear message and whatever message that should be given in my opinion, it should be consistent because that's the thing with training. That's the thing with learning. If you are getting mixed messages, you don't know what to do. So to me, I feel like there's truth in this, but it also muddies the water because now it's like, well, but I need to hit success club, but I, I, I shouldn't focus on selling anything to anyone and I just need to be authentic. But so how do I get success club again? And I'm trying to do that because I want to get Emerald. I want to, you know, it ends up being a very convoluted type thing. I'm just going to go back to that. I do think what she's saying, there's a lot of truth to it. I just don't think that trying to do that in multi-level marketing is going to work for most people. I mean, the numbers tell you it doesn't work for most people. You are some form of an influence. You are on social media sharing your life. You are an amazing person that to them, you have your act together somewhat. They look up to you. Do you don't think it's scary for them? It's freaking terrifying. It's way scarier than anything that you're thinking up in your head that you're going to reach out to them. They're terrified because you've got your act together. You found the solution, right? But if you've connected on something that, you know, you just nerded out about together or you answered a question, it's that much less scary for them to feel that they can come to you with a question that you've answered or that you're going to answer or a question about your challenge group. And that's where it doesn't become about the conversion, it doesn't become about the sale, it doesn't become about the dollar figure, it becomes about the impact and how deep you can go with people and how many people, and I hate to say it, yes, this is more work and it's not a copy paste messages, but it's the way to grow a business and it's the authentic way to grow a business. And that was a cold hard lesson that I had to learn, especially in the beginning. And it just brought me so much more joy in my audience and growing it in just such a deeper level. Now she talks about this in the beginning, but in the beginning, she was already making like, you know, 500 bucks a week and a thousand. 
you know, 2000, you know, like she grew in a way that most people don't leaves that out because people aren't going to be able to do that. They're not going to be able to do what she did unless they have that same exact background. And even then it's going to be a little bit, yeah. but I'm just saying, you know, with her background and the fashion thing, plus marrying wealthy, which, you know, those people have a lot of connections. And I kind of wonder this, I kind of wonder that maybe she did samples of Shakeology at the grocery store. And I bet you anything she would never tell us if she did. And that's something I'm kind of thinking that, you know what, if you're a father-in-law, you're going to be like, yeah, sure, go ahead. I mean, if this is going to help your, you know, daughter-in-law or whatever, if your son comes to you with this, don't you think that could have helped? I mean, I don't know that she did that. I'm just thinking out loud, but do you think that's possible too? Next question. I don't know what to share or what to say. So in your captions or wherever you're posting, and it is crazy to me how many coaches will almost get it in their head that 90 some percent of their day and their needle moving activities will be spent on, you know, putting together a social media post or a caption. And I've literally at Summit, which is super fun. I miss Summit. I love, I love being in person with everybody. But it's crazy when you're sitting next to someone and they're, they, at the beginning of the seminar, it starts and they're crafting their social media posts and they're still going. And this happened at Summit recently. And I literally said to my coach, are you still writing your social media posts? And she's like, yeah. Because she was trying to think of all the captions. And we all have, I've been through this. That's why I'm trying this. I've literally been through this where I'm trying to think of what to say, what to share, and it just doesn't come. You know why? Because you're thinking too hard about it. Just share the stuff that you're doing. Stop talking at your audience and be a part of the conversation with them. I ask a ton of questions. I think that far too many times we get stuck in this realm of, I'm going to speak at my audience and I'm going to tell them all about my life and tell them all about the things I'm doing instead of asking them how they're doing. Take the pressure off you for a second. Put it on them. <laughs> and people love to engage. So you know, make it exciting. I, one tip I can give you is I always share my gratitude first. I really think that if you can focus in on something that even if it's just little, and you might not think that your story is that exciting. It's exciting. Trust me to someone that it could change their life forever. It's exciting. Even if you, you're like, I, my life is boring. I'm at home all day. Trust me. It's, it's something for them to, to hang on to. So I always just try and pick something that I'm grateful for. And I share that on my social media and I try and engage from there and that's it. I don't really overthink it much more than that. I don't try and make it some philosophical thing because it's not who I am. Who I am is just, this is what I'm doing. I try and create a community through my captions. And when there's, I just think there's nothing more beautiful than when there's, and I want to say positive, positive conversations going on within the comments under my posts, I've done my job. Like I can just take a step back and be like, that's community. Like you've created something that's beautiful that people are meeting each other and people are doing something. And it's not about the end sale. And that's such a freeing thought to be like, okay, I've created a platform where people can come nerd out about something together that they have a similar interest in. And I'm that glue that brought them together. That's sweet. That's how you got to see it. And keeping it positive and light and airy and on the air of gratitude, I just think is such a great way to jump into it. So that's, yeah, speak with your audience, not at them. I feel like that's a huge thing. And I just, I think that it's a skill to, to be worked on for sure. And it was something that I had to learn. Again, I'm not going to disagree with her on that of speaking with people instead of two people. But so how do you do that? She doesn't tell you how. She tells you this is what you need to do. What are the steps to do that? How does somebody learn to do that? If you don't teach them how, you just tell them. There's a saying in training, telling, telling ain't training. And she's telling, you know, she's not showing. You need to show people how so that they have something to go by. You can't expect to just tell people something and they're like, got it. Okay, I know exactly what to do. That is just absolutely nuts. Number four, I'm not good at social media. What should I do? Join the club, boo. Like, 
I don't think that there are any coaches. I still remember Janelle always gets a lot of love from me on these calls. I still remember Janelle used to say that she would like take videos and screenshot the video and she didn't really like when people saw her face. We, and now she, like one of the top coaches ever, we don't all start knowing what to post. We frankly, pretty much all of us that have ever seen success in this business were terrible when we first started horrible. We didn't know what we were doing. Some of us still don't know what we're doing. We just show up consistently, but I want you to know, and this could make you feel a little bit better. It truly is a skill to know what to post on social media, to get better at taking photos, to understand what to say. It's a skill that you develop. Even just the simple fact of how to pose in a picture or what to say on a video, it's a skill. So when you see it as part of your personal growth and your personal development, one thing that I truly worked on in the beginning of my business was communication. I could not speak on video without pausing, umming, getting confused. And I just really realized that something that I had to work on was my communication skills on video, off video, while I was typing, when I was speaking and taking the time to know how to take a proper picture is not vain. It's our business. It's what we do. And I just think that's the greatest gift in the world that we get to double down on something that we have the freedom to walk into our backyard, take a picture and inspire hundreds and eventually thousands. If you have a team and you're impacting that many people. So how do you do all of that? She doesn't tell you. She tells you what you need to do, but you know, if you need to develop communication skills, and I would say most people do on social media, if they are going to grow a following, I mean, multimedia, I mean, multi-level marketing ain't the way to do it, but you know, I digress. But if you are going to do it, yeah, it absolutely is a skill. So why don't you provide communication training to people? Why don't you provide some kind of actual skill training that people can actually, you know, learn the skill instead of just telling them what to do? I think it's all because it's a bunch of busy work. Now people are going to be running around like, well, how do I learn to do that? Because that's not going to be provided for them. You know, it's up to you to figure it out. Even though we're giving you this plan, you know, this success club tracker, you just do these things. But now you know that there are some other skills you need to learn and you do, but you don't know how to do them. So you're going to run around trying to figure out how to do those things and get better at it. And that's, I think, where people get caught up in doing things like I did, like joining different, you know, masterminds and different horrible courses that are, I mean, as an instructional designer, I look at these courses and I'm like, what was I thinking? Why did I think I'd learn anything from this? Because it's a bunch of jank. Through taking a cool picture, like that's our job. So doubling down on that skill is not vain. It's not crazy. It's not weird. It's a skill that you can develop and grow and just see it as part of your daily personal growth. So I, I will say I've watched videos on YouTube of how to take a proper picture. I have learned from other people. I've looked and I've been inspired by other people as to how they take their pictures, what they say, what they do. And in time I got better and better. And the best thing I can tell you is that it will come with confidence. Your confidence is going to come from your progress that you're going to see. So you're going to eventually see progress. Even if it's like a 1% better, you're going to start to see some form of progress. You're going to see more comments, more likes, more DMS coming in. If maybe you already have confidence comes from that, from you getting better and being like, Oh my gosh, my pictures from a year ago compared to now are night and day. Right. And that's, I, I get a kick out of still going back to seven years ago, whenever I was a brand new coach and looking at my old, that, that breathes confidence into me because I see how far I've come. And I can see Mandy on. And when we shared the stage at Summit last year, we both did that. And Mandy had this picture that we both laughed about. She posted a picture of a girl with her face in pancakes. Like Mandy Kite, the queen of social media, posted that. That's growth. That's progress. And you know how good it feels as an upline and a friend to watch her grow and how good it feels for her to grow and to look at how far she's come? That's progress. It's growth. Your growth will equal happiness. So if you can measure your confidence in terms of every time that you're growing, that's how you're going to be happy in this business. And that's going to double down and kind of snowball into how you continue to post because you're sharing that happiness. I always share this with my team and they laugh and I'm just going to give you guys this example. You know that I've never even seen the freaking movie. I've just seen the commercial, but there's this movie called the Harry met Sally where she's basically in a diner and she's ordering something or eating something. It's like so fabulous that she's basically like 
making a scene and there's a woman in the diner that goes, I'll have what she's having. That's our job. That's literally our job to have so much joy and so much happiness and so much dang passion for whatever it is that you, the life that you be living that other people go, Oh, I want what she's having. Like that, that looks good. That's your job. So the happier that you can be like, what kind of a job is it? Can we just say that your growth of your business is dependent on your true happiness, like no BS, true happiness. Okay. There's a problem that I see with this because this, I feel, feeds into that whole fake, ah, you know, all of those pictures. They're always just like smiling and so happy. And it's like, life looks so grand. Life is not like that. It's not always this perfect little moment. And you look on any of these people, the top guys, you know, their social media, it's like, everything's like, ah. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's unreal. It's fake. And I know that these new coaches are going to then try to make it look like they've got the grandest life ever. I can remember, oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. But you know, it was all about showing how free your life was because of the opportunity. Then other people would think, oh, I want that too. But I'd go get a mani and pedi, or at the time I was doing lash extensions too, and I would take some little picture about it as if other people who have regular jobs, they're going to go like, no, I don't want my job anymore because her life looks amazing. That's what they want you to create is this sense of everything is just fabulous when you're not doing a regular J-O-B or just over broke. That's what they love to say. A regular job is just over broke. But multi-level marketing, that's the way to riches and health and happiness and lifestyle. And it just, it's not. That's freaking sweet. And that's what you have in front of you. If you can just measure it, double down on the growth and, and be real about it. Even if it's like 1% better, that you know that you got 1% better and you look back at that yesterday and you're like, I'm better today. That's happiness. When you're not growing, you will naturally feel less happy. If there's ever a moment where you're like, I'm stuck and I feel that focus on some growth, focus on some metrics, dude, and get better at something, pick a lane and get better at something really quick. And you'll feel so much better. Even if you just take like one little chunk out of it. Okay. So number five, this is, this goes out to one of my coaches. She asked this question today. So I'm doing all of the things and I feel like I'm doing all the things and I haven't seen progress yet. I love you so much and I wanna squeeze you because that means that you're a type A personality and welcome to the club. <laughs> That's literally what that means. So yes, you will feel that way. You will feel like you are doing things and you could be doing everything right. Hint, if you're hitting Success Club 10 every single month, you're crushing it, keep going. So one thing that I felt, especially in the beginning, being very type A, I just wanted to achieve all the things and faster. And it's all I wanted. That just makes you a badass entrepreneur that just really wants to see success. Keep going. But as I mentioned with growth, know your metrics, know what you want to hit and measure them consistently and get really freaking good at self-assessing. So if you can be your own, not worst critic, your own best self-assessment, not critic. Like I'm not looking for a tear myself down on the daily here. I'm looking for a external view into my life and calling myself out on my BS, not where I'm sucking, what I'm actually the opposite, like what you're doing well and double down on that. So metrics, three things, and this should be something that you measure every single day. People, so you could think about it from your social media following and actual numbers. And can I just say, it doesn't have to be your followers. It could actually be and should be like comments or daily messages coming in. I think likes and follows is such a surface level goal. Like you got to go way deeper because it cool. You could have a hundred thousand followers and have like one comment. It really, it depends on how many actual conversations you're having and how many people are taking time out of their time crunch day to leave you a message. And you know, if you comment back, then that's two. So thinking about that. So how many people like know that metric, the people, um, what's a goal that you have for your own business? You know, it can be income wise, like, well, the end goal of a conversation is not income. Your end goal in this business can be an income goal. It can be a certain deadline by a certain date or like your year end goal of 
having your team achieve a certain goal. And that takes me to the third metric, your rank. What do you want out of this business? And as you're progressing towards that and you're looking at the things that you're doing every single day, are you moving the needle towards those three things? And, you know, I don't just re self assess on January 1st that can I just say it is basic to go after your goals on January 1st, every single year. I love you. And you ain't basic to re self assess and to go through and truly measure where you've been and where you're going should happen every Sunday. What if it happened every day? Like what if you went at a Sunday night, how in a Monday morning, how you do on January 1st with that level of belief of this is going to be my year. And some of you do it monthly where you're like, this is going to be my month. What if you did that and you called yourself out on your stuff every evening before the day, the next day started and you thought, okay, this is where I excelled. This is where I could do a little bit better. I'm going to double down on stuff that worked yesterday. And if I totally crap the bed yesterday, then I'm going to be better tomorrow, but you're not waiting a full four weeks of a month to not hit that or better yet, you're actually seeing the measurement of how you're growing and that's going to equal the progress and that's going to equal the happiness in your business. And you're just going to be a freaking happier person. So I want to share a quote that I found today. It was the cutest thing. It's on like a little, it was on Pinterest, a little ice cream. It said, don't let your ice cream melt while counting someone else's sprinkles. You guys, that's so us. Don't let your dang ice cream melt. Go post and be yourself and enjoy your own dang sprinkles. So I love you guys. I wanted to keep this to exactly 20 minutes and bring you as much gold as I possibly could. I talk a lot. So I'm sorry that I spoke really fast. It is a dang miracle that I did this in 20 minutes, but I wanted to bring you guys the tangible gold. So if this helped you guys, please let me know because it means the world to me. And I literally prepped for this forever. And, you know, seven years in, I still get nervous and I love the crap out of all of you guys. So thank you. Enjoy your evening. Bye, you guys. I hope that this moved the needle for you. Bye, dudes. Now, I will say a lot of what she has to say, it's like, I mean, like, yeah, all of that makes sense. But the problem is it's hitched to multi-level marketing. That's the biggest problem. Most people who come into the business don't have a vast network. She did. You can't tell me otherwise with that background in fashion plus marrying into a very wealthy family. I had a grocery store, a chain of grocery stores. Kind of tells me there's a lot of people that know the name. Kind of makes me go, huh. Now, did she have growing pain? Sure, everybody does with everything they do. But I go back to what her first income was like when she started. Highly unusual. Highly unusual. That's not what most people do. They're not able to come in and just bang start knocking it out the park. And yet she's telling you, don't focus on that. And yet that's what she did. And I mean, I'm fine. I'm just finding mixed messages. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But to me, it was just like a lot of mixed messages. I'd like to know what your thoughts are on this because all of this to me was like, okay, overall, I think there were some decent concepts that she just told you. That's it. How do you put any of that into action? How do you do it? That's the thing that me as an instructional designer, when I create courses, I always think about what do I want the person to be able to leave the training and they can do on their own? What is that goal, which ends up being the terminal objective and you break it down to enabling objectives and you, it all wraps up together. You, know, you start with the easiest, you build up to the most complex. It's just, you know, that's how you kind of do it. So how is it like all of these things, where's the practice? Where's the feedback? How do you learn how to do all of this? Because you don't, you're just on your own to figure it out. And the only people that I've noticed that have had success come in with a network. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts and opinions are about all of this. Now, I think this is going to conclude my 15 star super diamond, whatever the heck beach body top people thing is because here's what happened. Um, they were supposed to be putting out a training every single week. And then from, from what I've heard, they stopped announcing it. And then the one from last week that was supposed to happen 
didn't happen. Nobody said anything. And it's just like, how is it you promise somebody something and then you don't deliver? And you tell all these new people, we're doing this for you, but then you just kind of drop the ball. But the thing is, I think about this too. They know full well, all of this stuff that they're doing, even if they did it every single week, it's not going to really help anyone. The people who have a network that come into it, they're going to be able to move the needle. The people who don't are going to be on the struggle bus. That's just how it is. Anyway, thanks so much for hanging out with me. Have a fabulous rest of your day and I will see you next time. Remember, you're beautiful and I love you. 